In the previous tutorials, we created a CentOS server to be a transparent proxy and to also handle routing and NATing as well as being a transparent proxy running Squid. And we set it up as a virtual machine. So behind here, I've got a CentOS virtual machine VMware. And it's got two NICs. It's got an outside interface, ETH0, and an inside interface, ETH1, pointing to the interior virtual LAN, basically. And then I have another virtual machine client that I ran uh, that is basically behind this CentOS server transparent proxy. So we want to continue with this lesson. And one of the things we did in that lesson on this CentOS machine that we had created was we had edited IP tables to set up the routing and the NATing. But th one thing that we did when we did the IP tables is we didn't save the configuration. So if I was to restart the server right now, we would lose all the configurations that we set up. Also, we manually configured the ETH1 interface, right? We manually configured a bunch of the settings on the router, but we also didn't do anything to save those configurations. So if the, once again, if this CentOS server, which is now our router, if it was to restart, we would lose those configurations. So in this tutorial, I'm going to talk about how do we save those configurations, and I also want to continue to add to the series. So we're going to also install DNS server. We're going to install bind on this CentOS server transparent proxy router. We'll also have it handle DNS. So let's get started. Now the first thing I want to do is I want to fix a mistake that I had done last time in IP tables. So we were experimenting with IP tables and we were doing it by putting in IP tables commands directly into a terminal right here, a command line. So one of the things we did was we added the IP tables quite a bit. To look at the IP tables we did an IP tables dash L command and when we did that we saw that there was a third line here that it said accept which means basically accept all packets and then for protocol it said all and then source it said anywhere and destination it said anywhere and I saw that as a problem because if if these accept statements are all judged um, in a sequential order right then an accept all protocols from anywhere to anywhere if it's prior to this reject then we'll never get to the reject so I saw this as as a mistake in the IP tables turns out though that I was wrong um, there is actually another command that we can use that will give us more information and when I use that command or when it was pointed out to me by Steve that um, we could do an IP tables dash save command and we would get more information and some of the things in the information when you when you um, put this kind of output the IP tables dash save command it tells you about the interfaces and it turns out that that command that I had deleted from the IP tables was only affecting the loopback interface and the loopback interface is the 127.0.0.1 address and so it was not a um, security risk or problem in the IP tables. It was not a problem, uh, essentially, access list statement. It was fine because it was only affecting the loopback interface. So I thought what we could do is we could put it back. So let's go over that right now. So the command that I used to get rid of the um, l line from the IP tables was IP tables dash t table filter so we're we remove something from the filter table and we did a dash d for delete and we deleted from the input chain line 3 and that's how we got rid of line 3 so essentially what we want to do is we want to put it back so instead of what we're gonna do is instead of dash d for delete we'll do dash capital I for insert we're going to input on line 3. And then I'm going to do a dash lowercase i for interface and then LO for loopback, dash J for jump target, which we'll put as an accept statement. So if we do that, and then we do the IP tables dash L command, you can see it's now back. Accept all protocols from any source to any destination. Now on the outside this looks 
like a problem because it looks like it's accepting everything um, which would in sequential order be prior to all these other statements which makes them kind of useless but once again if we do the IP tables dash save command you can see that that line which is the third line you can see it right here is actually accepting in to the input chain on interface loop back and so it's not actually really um, that big a deal so might as well put it back so now that we've put it back basically the next question that we want answered is what if we were to restart this CentOS server if we were to restart the CentOS server we would lose all of our IP tables so what we need to do is we need to if we're happy with the state of our firewall with uh, and with the IP tables we need to save this configuration okay so what I'm gonna do first is I'm gonna save the running IP tables in other words the changes we've made in IP tables is essentially altering what we would call the running configuration or the configuration in memory that's active so what we're gonna do is we're gonna say IP tables dash save right and we're going to output it to a file that we're going to name iptables.conf and this will be a text file so we'll do that command first all right and we already have root permissions we know that because we can see the pound sign here so that's fine now we'll just cat that file to check it out and you can see that it looks a lot like what we had seen when we just did the IP table save command so we can see that this is basically the current IP tables configuration right and we can basically see the whole thing here so you can see here that at the top here this is the this is the mangle table you can see here this is the beginning of the NAT table and you can see here that this is the beginning of the filter table and there's nothing here from the raw table so anyway this is our IP tables configuration file that is running this is not actually the the configuration file the default configuration file or the saved configuration file right so this is just something that we've basically sent to a text file now the actual configuration file I'm going to type clear here of the IP tables the one if we restart what it would default to if we were to restart this server now the file that it would default to is in Etsy sysconfig and the file name is called IP tables so what we're gonna do is we're gonna back that up right now which essentially it's the default or the original IP tables configuration so we'll say CP copy command root etc sysconfig IP tables and what we'll do is we'll copy it to root at C sysconfig IP tables dot back. So we'll do that and let's cat it out just to check it out. So if we cat it out, you can see here that this is the default configuration file for IP tables and you can see that it was actually quite small right and it just had essentially a filter table it had a filter table and not much else so that was it so this is the original file so we backed it up so now if we overwrite it if we overwrite the original we always have the backup to go back to so what we'll do is we'll say move IP tables dot conf to Etsy sysconfig IP tables and what that'll do is it'll move our file that we saved IP tables .conf, which has our edits and it will replace the IP tables configuration file and that way if that happens then if we restart the server our configuration file will be um, loaded and we won't lose our config basically so we'll do that and says do you want to override it and so we say yes and it's done now what we want to do is we want to cat that out just to make sure that it worked and you can see that when we catted it out that you can see that it, it worked because now 
you can see there's our masquerade handling natting. We now have a nat table, we have a mangle table, and we have the filter table. So it worked. So anyway, that basically has now saved our IP tables configuration that we created. In the future, another way to approach this, um, if we want to, instead of actually making command changes directly to IP tables by putting in IP tables command and having them instantly affect our essentially our Linux firewall, what we could do is just edit that comp file, basically save output our IP tables into a configuration file, edit it in a text editor, and then what we could do is then load that file into the running config. And to do that, all we'd have to do is do an IP tables, IP tables dash restore, and then we'd say from the IP tables dot comp file. So if we were to edit the IP tables dot comp file, basically offline, edit it, make it the way we want it, then what we could do is we could load it into IP tables and test out our firewall. And by doing that, we don't have to mess around with the current IP tables firewall. We could just load it back in. Now, the advantage to doing it this way is that what we could do is we could do a service restart and uh, restart the service or stop the service and then start the service, the IP table service that is. But if we do that, it would basically take down the IP tables, take down the firewall, and it also would disconnect any users that we might have on our interior network, right? Any users that have addresses or packets crossing the router would then lose connectivity and those hosts might be dropped. So by doing it this way, our iptables.com file is basically uploaded into our IP tables and we don't have we can do it without having to shut down the IP tables service.